Hello everybody, Sonda Adelaja here. Today I'm going to be talking about restructure or reconstruction. What does Nigeria need? A lot of people are clamoring for restructuring of Nigeria. I am clamoring for reconstruction of Nigeria. So what is the difference? And what does Nigeria really need? Is it restructuring we need or reconstruction? Well, there are even some people who are even more extreme than that. And those are the people who are talking about dissolution of the confederation called Nigeria. They want to go their own separate ways. They want to tear the country apart. apart and they want to, you know, destroy the country and come up with their own different kind of political structures called countries. But the more moderate views are the ones, you know, clamoring for uh, economic and financial restructuring of the country. They want to restructure the political structure of the land. So what does reconstruction, I mean restructuring mean to all these people? When they talk about restructuring, they are talking about the fact that at least the core of it, at the heart of this theory of restructuring is that the, the, the regions, every region should have the right to collect their own taxes rather than the federal government collecting all the taxes and sharing it the way it is being done now among the units and the, of the federation and the states. So what they are saying is that let us let every resources of the regions belong to them, let them develop themselves and let them bring the taxes and they are just giving a little to the center. In place of this present system, they want us to go back to the system that we used to have in the 60s, just immediately after independence, when each region generates its own revenue and is self-sufficient and only contributes a little to the center. Now, the problem with this, why I vehemently am against this, is because I am a student of history. If I had not been a student of history that knows the history of Nigeria, as, at least from independence to today, I can boast that I know the history of Nigeria toe and toe. I know the history of Nigeria um, in and out. <laughs> I've even written a book about that, the, the leadership question, Nigeria and the leadership question. And I've written several other books on Nigeria. But when it comes to history, even when I was still in Nigeria from the age of 16, I've been almost an expert in the history of Nigeria. And um, <laughs> when I was in Nigeria, I, my brother wrote a book about the history of Nigeria. So I knew that book almost on head and, uh, and by heart. And that book on the history of Nigeria, it was, you know, it, it, become, it became like a textbook in the universities. So I know the history of Nigeria very, very well. So because I'm a student of history and um, that is why I will not support restructuring. Restructuring of Nigeria will lead to the same path that the system that we had in the 60s led to. The regional system of the 60s, it led to something. And there is a reason why it was cancelled and why it was replaced. So the people who are clamoring for restructuring right now, they will not tell you why we change or why the country changed, why it was abandoned and why we are no more practicing regional government. They will not tell you why. And most of the people who practice this, I mean, who are clamoring for this restructuring right now, belong to what used to be the western part of Nigeria, the western Nigeria. They are mainly Yoruba people and people of that region. Western people are clamoring for restructuring. But what they will not tell you, and I'm so surprised that some of them are older people than myself. Some of them were alive during this time, and they're chosen to close their eyes at what re regional government led to. And the biggest reason why one of the, yeah, the biggest reasons why, uh, at least one of the biggest major reasons why that regional government was abandoned is because of that same western part of Nigeria. You know, there are people in the north that believe that the biggest problem in Nigeria is the Yoruba, are the Yorubas. Because those are the students of the 60s. They remember that the problem of Nigeria started in Yoruba land. Even though I'm a Yoruba man, 
and a lot of Yoruba people will be angry at me at this, but this is history. Yorubas and the Western region, regional government led to the crisis of Nigeria. The very first, the major, first major problem and crisis that the Nigerian nation faced was with the regional government of Western Nigeria. But when you listen to Yoruba people today, they will only be telling you about the victories and the successes that were recorded in the Western region. But they will not tell you the truth that even those successes that they are talking about were mainly recorded under the government of Obafemi Awolowo, who was just a genius on his own. But after him, things began to just break down. Even while he was still there, he was no more the regional premier, but he was already in the in the central and the central government as the opposition. Things were already breaking down, even though his government was still his party was still in in in, in control. So the crisis of regional government led to, almost led to war. It led to a crisis in Western, uh, in Western Nigeria. It led to political crisis that almost destroyed the whole country of Nigeria. That is what regional government leads to. The second reason why I'm against regional government is because after the crisis of the West, Western Nigeria, Western region. There are the only three regions. Western region had this crisis. The second region, that regional government, that also tried to do regional government, when, was when they put Ojuku in charge of the Western Nigeria, and um, he went and withdrew all his people because of the massacre that was going on in the north. He said the people should come back to their region, so everybody had their region. It was not states, just one region. And what that led to is declaring a secession and saying we are forming our own military, we are forming our own police, our own army. That is what region does, regional government does. And it led to our only civil war till today. Everybody withdraw to their own region and region against region. Hmm. Is history teaching us anything? Well, what I, one thing I know about history is if you don't learn the lessons of history, you will repeat history. You will repeat its mistakes. And if you don't want to repeat the mistakes of history, we should learn from the lessons of history. So, so they are only telling you the economic aspect of it. But they are not telling you the you know, intricacies, the political intricacies of regional governments. Because when people, when the central is weak, and the regions are, is, the strong region is strong, the power struggle in the region itself can collapse that region and collapse the country. That is what happened with Western Nigeria, with, uh, you know, with, with Shifo Bashfem Avolowa in his own party, AG, having a very big problem with his, his deputy that he put in his, Akitola that he put in his place. So, you know, and that almost destroyed the country. And it almost led to civil war, not just within Nigeria, but within Western Nigeria itself. And another danger, apart from the struggle among the political gladiators in, that, in a particular certain region, another problem is a certain region could even be united. Be so powerful that they will now say, okay, since the central is weak, we are going to attack. The rest of the of the country. This has happened. It's not that it could happen. It has happened. So the the biggest one of the biggest challenges of regional government is that that system was pitting or pitching one region against the other. They had economic competition, which was positive, but they also had religious competition and hatred. We had more tribalism that time. Regional government also promoted tribalism. That's why up to now some people are still calling Yorubas tribalists. Because Yoruba mm, Western region was governed by a Yoruba party and it was more like a tribal state. And all the same thing, you know, the West, you know, Western Nigeria, I mean, even Eastern Nigeria was, you know, dominated by the Igbos. And the people in South South and um, Portakot, Calabar, they hated the Igbos. They hated the Igbos because they thought, they said that everything, every major decision has to be done, has to go through the Igbos. And Igbo, in fact, some of them changed their names to Igbo names so, because the Igbos were the dominant tribe and they, they, they took total control. 
So, up to now, some people in those regions, they don't want Igbos at all. And that's why the, the Nigerian, in the Nigerian Civil War, the Nigerian government was able to win and defeat Biafra. One of the reasons, because all those, you know, uh, uh, Ibon, uh, you know, rivers, Ogoni, Ogoni people, and um, the river people, and the cross river people, all of them betrayed the Igbos, even though they were in the same region, because they, they had been oppressed by them. So, so uh, you know, the, there's a lot of problems in the region, in region. Even right now, some people are saying, okay, let's go back to the regions. So, who is, okay, let's go. So, region will be South-South region, right? So, where is going to be the capital of South-South region? Is it going to be Calabar? Is it going to be in Port Harcourt? Is it going to be in uh, Delta State? Who is going to control? Who is going to be the, where is going to be the leader? Who is going to be the, the you know, if you talk about, even Yoruba land, where everybody is like uh, homogeneous, right? You know, who is everybody is Yoruba, right? So who is going to? Where is the capital going to be? You want people in Ogun State, in Abeokuta, who have tasted liberty and freedom, to now submit and say, okay, we are giving up. We are no more going to be the capital of Ogun State. We are now going to be submitted to Ibadan again. You want even Oshun to be submitted to Ibadan again? You do you want even people from Lagos or everybody to be submitted? Nobody wants to go back to that. It is too complicated. Restructuring is a dream that will never come to pass. It is too much problem it's going to create. So the political structure of the country were crafted around three major ethnic groups. And we have already gone through that already. And they, you know, they, they, they took on one another. They, they hated one another. The political forces in the north hated the people. Maybe not hated. Maybe it's a strong word. They didn't like the southerners. You, you have the Saudana interview that is there. You know, talking about the Igbos. And then the southerners also didn't like the northerners. You, you know. So now that everybody is having their own state, it's much more, you know, uh, easier to unite the country than when you have regions. So, and the, the, of course, so it's because of all these problems that the government of Aguin Irose decided to unite, to cancel the regional government. And they started to create some form of more of a um, unity, unity government. So he tried to unite the go government, but he took it far because he was not even creating states. He just united the whole country as one. And that unity government forced everybody to totally not to even have states. But people like Ogowon, he, you know, God gave him wisdom to begin to create states. And it is the state system that is the ideal for a country like Nigeria. Just like with America, just like with Brazil, just like with Germany, just like all these great countries that are practicing states, federal, federation. And that federation is what Arun goes to, Agun Hiroshi was supposed to do, but introduce unity kind of constitution. And it's funny enough that Agun Hiroshi, who introduced Nigeria to be united, he was an Igbo man. He was one of the Igbo presidents or head of state that we ever had. And now it is the Igbos, his own people, that are condemning that system the most. So then the other Nigerians could say, but who put it upon us? Who brought the system upon us? You are doing, you, are, you Igbos are telling us as if it is the other, other uh, Yorubas or Mausas who brought the system upon you. No, it is your own man. You have to tell the whole truth. It is your own country, I mean, countrymen or um, tribesmen that actually introduced this and brought this unity uh, government upon the country. Namdi Azikwe was the one who did that before that even, who campaigned for that, but it was good. Namdi Azikwe had a very good heart in that sense. But, you know, but people like uh, Gowon and, uh, you know, Babangida later on, they improved it by in putting the states in. Even right now in the West, do you want, I mean, in the East, even though everybody there is Igbo, do you think that if you go back to regional government, do you think that Enugu will, 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 be under, will agree to be under Anambra? Do you think that Anambra will go back to Enugu to be submissive of Enugu people? Do you think even Abia will go will agree to go back to Enugu and become the capital and um, let them become the capital? Do you think that uh, even you know Ebonyi will agree to that? You know a lot of you know 
a lot of controversies, a lot of uh, questions that must be answered. But people are just being emotional and the emotions of, oh, okay, things are bad, let us just go our own way, is what is driving us. We are not thinking things through in their details. They, it could lead to more problems than we are even, uh, uh, you know, anticipating right now. So the Aguin Rossi government, you know, get, brought the country together as unity, but then it was changed to federal government by uh, the Gowon, like I've said, uh, you know, like the Obasanjo and other people like that, which we, they have, you know, strengthened, uh, that has brought about the strengthening of the country as a whole of the, of, of the, right, of the what we have right now. So what I am talking about is that we don't need regional government that, were, that has already failed us. You don't go back to something that has failed you because you, are not, you think you are not having the best result right now. But my own position is what we need is reconstruction. And reconstruction is not talking about physical, geographical division of the country. That this one will carry the money, this one will divide the money, this one will take the money and the tax. And No, no. It's talking about value systems. We need to reconstruct ourselves, the Nigerians, as individuals. We need the reconstruction of Nigerians. We need the reconstruction of our value system. We need the reconstruction of our belief system. We need the reconstruction of the main things, principles, and content that make us who we are as a people. For example, one of the things that we need to reconstruct is the way, you know, the salary distribution system. That needs to be reconstructed. We need to reconstruct the imbalances between the rich and the poor. That needs to be reconstructed. It doesn't matter where they come from. What is not about region. It is about the values. It is about the the, the, the mindset, the value system, the worldview that, has, that is prevalent in the country. Those worldview that anybody that is rich is better than any other Nigerian must be destroyed. We must introduce egalitarianism. We must introduce the equality of all citizens. We must introduce you know, the, 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 pre, the super, superiority of the law. That everybody is equal by the law, that there is no big manism. We must, you know, destroy the big manism concept. We must even, you know, break down the, uh, the, and destroy the way we are doing politics. Maybe we should cancel electioneering, electioneering and political parties and introduce something else. So it is not restructuring by geographical, you know, understanding and tenets, but it is restructuring and it's not just restructuring by money distribution. No, because even if you restructure right now, the West will Western people, the Eastern people, they will be controlling their own money, their own resources, their, their own wealth. Then they will start to even be corrupt even the more. They will start embezzling even more than right now they are embezzling. So it is about creating a balance between the halves and the halves not, the, between the rich and the poor, between all Nigerians, the, bringing about equality and introducing value systems that will make us to become people of virtues and people that have the values that bring about construction, I mean, uh, development and civilization of a people. These are the kind of things that I stand for when I talk about reconstruction. And I have a whole series that I do. And the whole series, the series is called Reconstructing Nigeria and Nigerians. If you want to know what reconstruction is all about, look for that series on, uh, uh, on my YouTube called Sunday Adelaide, Reconstructing Nigeria. And you will see, you know, what that entails, what it means to reconstruct a nation. So I am for reconstruction rather than restructuring. Restruction is just physically dividing the country and distributing the money and making, because the people who are calling for that are the same elite. This same elite, they will remain the same elite even when the country is divided. They are ruling today, they will come and rule there. Only now, they will be more in charge of their own region and they will totally suppress all the Afghans and the poor, ordinary people and the middle class. They will now become the rule queen. They will just totally take total control and dominion of that region because there is no federal government to stop them. For the love of God, church and nation, peace. Sunday Adelaide here. If you believe in nation building principles, please like this video, share it with your friends, and let's change our nations together.